New Covenant Freedom, Hebrews chapter 8, verses 1 through 6. But I want to begin with a quote by Charles Spurgeon. We're going to come right off of chapter 7, talking about, about Melchizedek the priest and, and how Jesus is, is much superior to him. We don't know a lot of history of Melchizedek, except that Abraham met him and gave him a tenth of, 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 of all that he had. And it's just a, an interesting story. But Charles Spurgeon writes this. You know, as we look at this again to finish up today, not only the freedom that comes and came with this new covenant, but about the new covenant itself, Jesus Christ. And Spurgeon writes this, should be on the screen, settle this in your heart. And this is something we need to settle right up front. Well, that whether I am up or down, the Lord Jesus is the same. Whether we are on the mountaintop or in the valley, Jesus is the same, correct? Whether I sing or sigh, the promise is true and the promiser is faithful. Amen. Whether I stand on the summit or am hidden in the veil, the covenant stands fast and everlasting love abides. I love that. The promise is true, and the promiser is faithful. And we are not alone on this journey. Everywhere we go, the presence of God is there with us. I often think at times... Moses, take your shoes off. Where you're standing is holy ground. And the reality and the truth is this. As followers of Jesus Christ and sanctuaries of the living God, every place we stand, every place we step is holy ground. J.I. Packer writes this. Guidance, like all God's acts of blessing under the covenant of grace, is a sovereign act. Not merely does God will to guide us in the sense of showing us his way that we may tread it. He wills also to guide us in the more fundamental sense of ensuring that whatever happens, whatever mistakes we may make, we shall safely come home. Slippings and strains there will be, no doubt. But the everlasting arms are beneath us. We shall be caught, rescued, and restored. You see, this is God's promise. This is how good he is. And the writer of the book of Hebrews writes it this way, chapter 8. Verses 1 through 6. I know I mentioned last week I was going to have like 8 or 9 points. Didn't work out. There were 15. I'm joking. There's 4. But the writer coming off of chapter 7 says this. After he's talked about Melchizedek and how the Lord, uh, the, the Father God made Jesus a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. We see that in, in chapter 7, verse 17. You are a priest forever, pointing to Jesus and the new covenant. And then he writes this in chapter 8, the first six verses. Now the main point of what we are saying is this. We do have such a high priest who sat down at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heaven. Verse 2. And who serves in the sanctuary, the true tabernacle, set up by the Lord, not by a mere human being. Now we know that in the makeup of temple worship and Moses bringing the people out of Egypt and, 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 and 40, 40 years and this and that, and we know that the priesthood came through one line, and that was the, 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 the house of Levi, 
And that's what they did. Verse 3. Every high priest is appointed to offer both gifts and sacrifices, and so it was necessary for this one also to have something to offer. Talking about Jesus. And he offered up the perfect, pure, once and for all sacrifice. Verse 4. If he were on earth, he would not be a priest, for there are already priests who offer the gifts prescribed by the law. Verse 5, they serve at a sanctuary that is a copy and shadow of what is in heaven. That is why Moses was warned when he was about to build their tabernacle, see to it that you make everything according to the pattern shown you on the mountain. That which the Lord had directed him. Set everything up this way. Set the, 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 the priests up this way. The tribe of Levi. They, they will always be that. Verse 6. But in fact, the ministry Jesus has received is as superior to theirs as the covenant of which he is mediator is superior to the old one since the new covenant is established on better promises. The old was good. It came straight from God. The law came straight from God. Through Moses, he, 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 because it came from God, it was good, but it was never meant to save. What Paul said, I would not have known what covenant was if it hadn't been for the law. It was to point out God knew we needed a Savior. God knew we needed Jesus Christ. Christ. Some things I see in this passage of Scripture, uh, the, the first one is this. The priest, the high priest of this new covenant is indestructible. He's indestructible. First John, or John, the Gospel of John, chapter 1, I think it's verse 5. The darkness has tried to overcome it. The darkness has tried to overcome it, but it has not and will not ever, ever succeed overcoming the light of Jesus Christ. This new high priest of the new covenant is indestructible. Look at verses 1 and verse 2 of, of, of Hebrews chapter 8. Now the main point of what we are saying is this. We have such a high priest. He's indestructible. I'm paraphrasing there. Who sat down at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heaven and who serves in the sanctuary, the true tabernacle set up by the Lord, not by a mere human being. And he sits at the right hand of the Father this very moment making intercession for us because that high priest of the new covenant is indestructible. They put him in the grave, but three days later he rose again and he sets at the right hand of the Father. That is an amazing, amazing truth. He's indestructible. Peter put it like this in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive in the spirit. And that same spirit that brought Jesus Christ back to life from that tomb is the same spirit that dropped on Pentecost and the church began and is that same spirit that empowers us today, followers of Jesus Christ. Indestructible. Paul put it like this in Romans chapter 8, verse 34. Who is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus died, and more than that, was raised to life, and is at the right hand of God, and is also interceding for us. Acts chapter 2, verse 24. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from his agony of death, because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. Him because the high priest of the new covenant is indestructible. That is our king. I love that C.C. Winans song. That is our king. This is our king. This is our king. Yes. 
And he humbled himself and came to this earth. And the light continues to shine in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Does life get messy? I don't know. I've never experienced it. Really. Of course it does. And it's tough. And it's hard. But we're not alone. You see, our high priest is indestructible. And he's with us. And he's still on the throne. Amen. Look at verses 8 and 10 in chapter 8. God found fault with the people and said, The days are coming, declares the Lord, and I, that I, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt because they did not remain faithful to my covenant. And I turned to them away from them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant I will establish with the people of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. Verse 10, I will put my laws in their minds and write them on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. The covenant, this, this covenant, the high priest of this new covenant is able to cleanse us wholly. W-H-O-L-L. Why? I will, what's it say there in verse 13? I will, verse 12 and 13, I will forgive their sin. I will remember it no more. Not only is he able to cleanse us wholly, he is also able to make us holy, capital H, capital O, capital L, capital Y. And why do I say that? Just the very presence of Jesus Christ in our lives and the Holy Spirit residing within us, that is holiness. Oh, there's some decisions we need to make. We do have a responsibility. What is our responsibility? Well, I've got to get myself cleaned up so the Holy Spirit can reside in me. No, no, no. Our responsibility is this. Here I am. I am yours. You do with me what you will. I am yours am yours. Not only does he cleanse us holy, every part of us, he makes us holy. First John chapter 1 verse 7 out of the English Standard Version the, 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 this is the word but if we walk in the light as he is in the light we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus his son cleanses us from all sin. This high priest is able to cleanse us Holy And oh, what an amazing gift that is. And oh, what a great feeling that is. But we need to understand it's not about feelings because feelings will lead us astray. It's about the truth of Jesus Christ. I will remember your sins no more. Just as if. He buries them in the deepest ocean. And if we continue to walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and we need each other on this journey. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. The prophet Ezekiel put it like this in Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 25. I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols. And it is so good when he does that, and those are gone and buried in the deepest sea, and we are forgiven, and we are saved, and we begin this journey of of righteousness and holiness. This high priest of the new covenant, he can do that. The word of the Lord out of Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18, Come now, let us settle this matter, says the Lord himself. 
Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool because Jesus is able to do that. He shed his blood for that reason. Is it possible? Is it possible to live a holy life? Not a trick question. We're Nazarenes, folks. Wesleyan Arminian thought process, heart thought process. We believe it to be true. We believe that God can do so much work within us. We do not have to sin. Am I saying we won't? I'm saying we do not have to. We do not have to. If that same spirit, that same power that rose, raised him from that grave is residing in us, don't you think that power is pretty, 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 pretty powerful? We can say, no, in the name of Jesus Christ, I am done walking this low-level road anymore. It's time to get on the high road. He can make us holy. But Peter put it like this, but just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. 1 Peter chapter 1, 15 and 16, 16, for it is written, Be holy, because I am holy. Right out of the book of Leviticus, time and time and time again, we hear the word of the Lord. Be ye holy, for I, your, I the Lord, am holy. Be ye holy, for I, the Lord, am holy. If it wasn't possible, why would he continue to say it? It's possible. Do we always get it right? No. But we've got a Savior who is full of grace and says, come on, let's get up. Brush your knees off. Here, let me fix that. On the, on the skin your knee, but let's walk together. Let's walk together. Let's get back into it again. Because this high priest is able not only to cleanse us holy, but he is able to make us holy. Paul writes in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit soul and body kept, be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And get this, get this, the one who calls you is faithful, he will do it if we will allow him. Here I am, Lord, I'm yours. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up, Isaiah chapter 6. And, 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 and woe is me, I'm a man of unclean lips and I'm in the very presence who will go for me? Church, it's not so much about going. That's important. But that the Lord knows that we are available to go wherever he calls us. And to know beyond a shadow of a doubt, to know that we know that we know that he will provide and empower. I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols. Sanctify you through and through. From the very top of our head to the very bottom of our feet, through and through, not only physically, but in every part of our journey, through this, through that, through some more, through some more, through and through and through, our God is with us because that is what he's about. The high priest of the new covenant is able to cleanse us wholly. Let's move on just a little bit further. Verse 6, back in Hebrews chapter 8. 
In fact, the ministry of Jesus has received, the ministry Jesus has received is as superior to theirs, talking about the, 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 the priest of, 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 of the Old Testament, the law and the, the Levit Levitical uh, uh, line and all that. So Christ, Jesus has received is as superior to theirs as the covenant of which he is mediator is superior to the old one since the new covenant is established on better promises. The priest of the new covenant is our best hope. Right? Man, we just came to an election year that was, that's not even talking about anybody. I mean, it's done. Leave it alone. But the priest of the new covenant is our best hope. Listen to this out of Romans chapter 8, verses 22 through 25. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time, Paul writes. Not only so, verse 23, not only so, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship. Come, Lord, come. We were just at a football game yesterday afternoon, and, 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 and we had a conversation with a, a couple that, that we know, and, 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 and talking about, you know, uh, Jesus and this and that, and, and the lady said to Pam, man, I hope he comes soon. I hope he comes soon. I hope he returns soon. Not only so, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit, verse 23, back in Romans chapter 8, we groan inwardly as we eagerly await for our adoption to sonship, the, re the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved, but hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it penitentially. Pen Patiently, the priest of the new covenant is our best hope. I'm going to prepare a place, John 14, and if I go and prepare a place, I will come again to take you to be with me where I am. You know the way to the place I am going, church church there's only one way there's only one person there's only one person's blood who can cleanse us from sin and that is Jesus Christ the righteous one he is our best hope you see optimism is a wish without warrant Christian hope is a certainty Guaranteed by God himself. Optimism reflects ignorance as to whether good things will ever actually come. Christian hope expresses knowledge that every day of his life and every moment beyond it, the believer can say with truth on the basis of God's own commitment and his word, the best is yet to come. J.I. Packer, the best is yet to come to come. I'll never forget the first uh, uh, celebration of life, the funeral service that I sat in and, 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 and we walked in and there were, there were forks on everyone's seat. I thought, well, this is interesting. <laughs> never had this happen before, never been part of this. But the way it worked out, the way the pastor brought it to be was so cool at the end of every meal we sat and you know, hey, keep your forks, we've got pie coming from the kitchen. For some of us, the turkey's good. I love it. The gravy's okay. Mashed potatoes, bring them on. But oh, the pumpkin pie with whipped cream on, the best is yet to come. Hey, you get it. Come, Lord, come. He wants that no one should perish, but that all come to salvation. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. The priest of the new covenant is our best, best hope. And the priest of the new covenant, let me close with this. 
the priest of the new covenant meets all our needs. All of them. All of them. Philippians 4, verse 19, and my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. And there's no end. He's indestructible. David writes in Psalm 34, verse 10, the lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Now, we may all seek the Lord in different ways. Regardless, if we are authentically seeking the Lord, His will, what do you have for me? We lack no good thing. We may not get everything we want. But we get everything we need. That's our God. He blesses beyond measure. Romans chapter 8, and I'll close with this, verse 31 and 32. What shall we say then in response to all these things? God is for us. Who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Can you get in on that? I can take a stand there. God is good. Is he still teaching me? Yes. Very much so. But I believe with all my heart that one day and one day soon he's going to come back and take his church home. Are we ready? Because it's going to happen. The high priest of the new covenant is indestructible. He cleanses us holy and holy. He is our best hope and he meets all our needs. Bow your heads with me. Father, thank you. Thank you. We've come into a busy, busy time. Thanksgiving just around the corner. And we are so grateful for your many blessings. The season of Advent is just around the corner. Christmas is just around the corner. And it gets hectic. But through these seasons, through these times, through the busyness of life, Remind us, remind us to step back. To step back and not lose sight of you, our high priest. And not lose the sight, not lose sight of the covenant that you made that still stands, that is still in effect. Give us strength. Continue to empower. Continue to remind us, abide in me and I will abide in you. 
Thank you for abiding. We thank you for your promises. Guide and direct. Continue to bless these, your people, as we do our best to bring honor and glory to your name as we do our best to live as kingdom people. Thank you for the ministry of the new covenant. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for your shed blood. Thank you for the tomb. Thank you for making intercession for us. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for being here today. In just a little bit, we'll gather around the table and fellowship. Hopefully all of you can stay. Have a great week. God bless.